If you're a medical student, I'm sure you've thought about optimizing your study process. Wondered what truly is the best way to study? Watched many YouTube videos, after all there's so much information out there. But you still find it confusing. So, if you want to know how to study efficiently to do super well in your exams, the big secret is that there is no secret. The truth is that the best way to study is the method that will keep you engaged for the longest period of time and it will keep you interacting with the subject knowledge and the study material. Studying in medical school is something that's very individual, although there are some key principles to follow to make sure this process is as smooth and as comprehensive as possible. If you're new here, my name is Siobhan and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London and I make videos about medical school, university, lifestyle and travel. And if you haven't checked out my channel yet, go check it out. And if you think it's something you'd be into, then smash that subscribe button. Now coming back to the subject of this video. The fact is that everyone is wired differently and there are many different types of learners. I may learn differently from you and you may learn differently from your friends. There are four main types of learners, visual, auditory, reading and writing, and kinesthetic learners. Now, depending on what type of learner you are, which may not be one or the other, it may be a combination, you will find different methods useful to different degrees. And these methods may include reading, note taking, using flashcards, single best answer questions, or mind mapping, brain dumping, or one of many other techniques. Although the evidence shows that there is a clear hierarchy in terms of study methods with reading or rereading being at the bottom rung, followed by note taking, followed by flashcards and single best answers, or methods that include active recall as better ways to retain information. This may not be true for everyone, this is just a general trend that has been observed. That's because rereading and note taking are more passive processes versus obviously doing flashcards, doing questions, actually having to apply the knowledge that you're attempting to retain or actually testing yourself on it are more active. For some people, they may be better readers and rereading may actually be really useful for them, especially people who've grown up reading. They may engage better through reading the information and they may retain more of it than other people would doing the same thing. For example, I didn't grow up reading. I'm not a big reader. I'm not an avid reader at all. So I don't find reading to be an engaging uh, method of learning because I usually lose focus partway through, you know, reading anything, uh, especially if I'm not actively doing something with it. So that's why I thought that note taking would be more useful for me because I actually have to actively write the information down, right? Uh, but I tried that and essentially I wasted a lot of time doing this because uh, writing down notes does take a long time and uh, many times you're actually more engaged with the process of writing the notes down, actually writing the words than you are with understanding what you're writing or retaining it. And therefore, I do follow the general trend and I do find flashcards and single best answer questions or um, question banks to be the most useful resources for studying for myself. They help me remember the most information and I can spend the most time doing them, which overall makes them most beneficial for me. But all in all, studying should include certain core principles or a certain backbone and uh, then what you want to fit into this sort of outline of studying is really up to you. So I think studying should always begin with primary learning. So uh, what primary learning is according to me is it's a f your first contact with any piece of information. So that could be through tutorials, that could be through lectures, that could be on placement in classes, uh, I mean through reading a textbook. So that's your primary learning because you really do have to see the information at least once before you begin engaging in you know, any sort of active processes. Then you move on to active recall, which is all the craze if you're in medical school. So that means flashcards and question banks. Because now you want to start testing yourself on your primary learning. 
because this is the only way that you're going to retain it. Medical school, of course, comes with an unbelievable amount of information. Various different specialties, which include a number of conditions under each of them, which include diagnosis, symptoms, management, investigations, all that stuff underneath each single disease. So there's an insane amount of information, so you definitely need an active way of remembering all this. So flashcards or question banks. And then what's really important, and I feel like this is something that many people miss out, is a feedback loop. So you need to understand where you're going wrong in your learning. I mean, not where you're going wrong essentially, but what you're not really getting a hold of. What are your weaknesses? What are the specialties in which you don't get that many questions, right? What are the specific topics that you're not managing to crack? You need to take note of those and somehow you need to feed them back into this system of studying, this system of primary learning and active recall, and you need to shift your focus towards what you don't know. Of course, if you're using Anki or you're using QuestMed or you're using any of these resources, they will naturally incorporate this sort of feedback into your study method. Because for example, Anki, if you say you're not confident with the flashcard, it'll show it to you more often. Similarly, with QuestMed, you can generate flashcards based on the questions that you got wrong in your set of questions that you would have done in a day or in a certain setting. It would be to always read the explanation for the correct answer as well as the explanation for the incorrect answers whenever you're doing question banks or single best answer questions because that way you actually learn through doing the questions rather than just recognizing patterns. So that feedback of doing more based on what you get wrong is naturally incorporated but even if it's not you can do it manually as well. Another thing that you should do is if you identify what your weaknesses are, what topics you're not getting, what specialties you're not getting, do engage in in extra primary learning with them as well. So that means reading more about them in your textbooks, maybe watching a few videos on them on Osmosis or on any helpful YouTube channel. Try and understand what you're not understanding and try and fill in that gap. But like I said earlier, the best form of learning is the one that keeps you engaged because it's not just the length of studying that matters, it's also the depth. Because the more intense your study sessions are, the more focused you are, the more interested you are in what you're doing, the more likely you are to take more of it away, to understand it and to actually benefit from what you're doing. And if you enjoy what you're doing, both the quantity and quality of your study sessions will automatically be enhanced. All in all, make the learning process enjoyable, do flashcards, do questions, go to the library, study with your friends and make it a game for yourself because that's something I find really useful. Set different targets, set numerical goals. How many hours do you want to spend studying today? How many questions do you want to do? How many flashcards do you want to complete? What do you want to score on your flashcards or on your questions? Set targets and if you do so, It'll become a game and uh, you can actually compete with yourself to best your own scores or to do better than you did the day before. And this is something that I find always motivates me and uh, helps me make my exam season or my study sessions slightly more enjoyable and it'll also help you carry on for longer. So these are all methods that I'm trying to incorporate and trying to emphasize while I'm studying myself because I have exams coming up soon. It's exam season and if you have exams coming up soon, good luck. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you managed to take something away from it and I hope uh, by incorporating some of this you can make your study process a bit more enjoyable, a bit more effective and you can manage to just, you know, make your life that much more enjoyable as well because you can make studying something that's efficient and not something that's absolutely draining. But if all of that is the case, then do drop a like down below on this video, smash that subscribe button, leave me any comments you want and do share the video with your friends and family or whoever you find it useful. And with that, I will see you in the next one.